Drake was very strategic from the very beginning. And it's only, again, in hindsight that you get to see how those steps, how important each of those little steps were. Drake's path to stardom started way before he perched on top of the CN Tower. Getting there required a kind of methodical planning and strategic thinking he would use throughout his career. Early on, Drake knew that achieving his rap dreams would require the help of already established artists who have left their own marks on the Toronto music scene. One of the first people he turned to was Toronto hip hop legend, Socrates. Drake was in a session where I was hanging out working with Boy One and Drake actually didn't even say anything. He just kind of hung in the corner and just, just watched and enjoyed the session. So I didn't even know who he was or why he was there, but we were always inviting. As we got more acquainted and we started sharing our, our love for each other's music and style, Drake literally just asked me for a favor. He said, I need a studio where I can record this song idea I have. I said, let me call my guy. Well, this is Noah at the time, before, before he renamed himself 40, who at that time was working almost solely for me. Um, and, and I said, stick with 40. And I they were sitting couch across from each other. I said, you guys got a lot in common because they they're both uh, child actors. Because 40 was in a couple movies as a, as a child as well. I was like, you guys got a lot, of, probably a lot more in common than you thought. And from there, that, that, that relationship that blossomed between them was absolutely brilliant. I want the money, money in the cars. Once they connected, it was only it was only a matter of two, three months. And here comes uh, songs like Successful and these staples from the very beginning, where it's like, okay, it's gone. <laughs> 